Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reorganizing my fabric storage. So I thought I'd pick up the camera and bring you along with me so I can show you how I go about storing my fabrics, as well as a look at my rather extensive fabric collection. So let me show you what my fabric storage situation looks like right now. So at the moment, I store all my fabrics and fabric scraps and other sewing supplies on this shelving unit here. I actually picked this shelving unit up at the thrift store for only $20 and it has been doing the job nicely and I've really loved having my fabrics out on display like this. But this little nook that I've got it in gets very sunny, especially over summer I've noticed. It's just pretty sun drenched, meaning I have to put like a little makeshift curtain up to cover and protect my fabrics from sun damage, which just looks really messy and a little bit ugly. So today I'm thinking of completely rechanging this whole situation to be able to protect my fabrics a little bit better. So last week I actually picked up two really simple looking cupboards. I'll put them on the screen now and leave a link to them below. They're really simple, but they look absolutely perfect for fabric storage. And I've measured up the space where my fabric is currently and they're gonna fit perfectly inside that little nook. So yeah, I'm very excited to set those up. I think they're gonna be a much better solution. Um, but to start this video off, I'm going to take everything off the shelves currently and wheel that one out of the way so I can make room for these new ones. Okay, so I've just taken everything off the shelving unit and just put it onto my cutting table for now. Now that I've taken everything off, it does seem like a lot of stuff. So I'm really worried now that these new cupboards that I'm gonna build in a second aren't gonna fit everything, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Something else I've noticed about these open shelving units like this is the fabric has gotten quite a bit dusty as well. It's not too bad, but I think having cupboards is just gonna be so much better, so much cleaner, and yeah, much better for the fabrics. I definitely plan on keeping this shelving unit though. I still can't believe I found it for only $20. It was such a bargain and they're so handy to have. I think I'll definitely find a space for this somewhere else in my house. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and then I can get started on building the new cupboards. just finished building the cupboards. They definitely took a lot longer to make than I was expecting, but I'm really, really happy with them. I am going to attempt to do a little DIY with these cupboards just to make them look not so much like flat pack furniture, which hopefully will turn out as I have in mind. But for now, I'm going to start folding up all of these fabrics. And to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I'm going to order them in colors and then pop them into their new home in these cupboards. One of the most asked questions I receive is where do I get my fabrics from? And if you're new to this channel, then I actually worked in a fabric shop up until May last year. And so a lot of the fabrics you can see here, I actually picked up while working that job. I did get a bit of a discount on fabrics, so it was tricky not to purchase everything. And I have been sewing for the best part of a decade. So a lot of these fabrics I've had for many, many years. Some I picked up in Japan when I traveled there. Some have been gifted to me, but the majority of them I would say are secondhand or vintage fabrics um, that I've picked up from thrift stores or eBay, places like that. But yeah, I do really love every single piece in my collection. I'm pretty ruthless with only buying fabrics that I have a huge love for and not just buying fabric for the sake of it. 
But yeah, let me know if you'd like to see more of my fabrics. I think it could be fun to show you my entire collection maybe in a separate video. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if that's something you might be interested in. see the fabric sit so nicely in these cupboards it's like it was made for fabric just look how perfectly they fit in there I've had so much fun this afternoon just taking my time folding up all my beautiful fabrics it's been really nice to just be reminded of what fabrics I have in my stash as well so I have these ones here these are the like pink and yellow tones and then in this cupboard I have the blue and green tones um, with a bit of extra space as well. So that's really nice. You can really start to see just how sun drenched this area becomes, especially during the afternoon. So it feels really good to have my fabrics nicely in a new cupboard to be protected. And how good do they look now that they've been neatly folded? Oh, it just really is satisfying to see all my hard work today coming together. Um, I'm definitely not finished yet though. I still need to find a home for the rest of my stuff that is sitting over here. Um, hopefully I can fit the books in that bottom shelf maybe. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, I'll continue that on tomorrow. <laughs> So it's the next day now, but before we get into what I have planned for today, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious type people. If you enjoy watching my videos and other YouTube channels like mine, then you are going to love Skillshare. On Skillshare, you can find classes on a huge range of different topics such as sewing, design, fashion, the list goes on and on. Each class is broken down into lessons and is curated to make it easy for you to learn new and practical skills, meaning there are no ads to interrupt your learning and most classes are under 60 minutes long with short lessons to be able to fit any schedule. I've been watching a class by Emma Gannon called Unlock Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence. And for someone who's still pretty new to the world of self-employment, especially in a creative field, this class has been super helpful and insightful for me. I've been listening to Emma's podcast for years and it feels like such a gift to be able to gain even more insight into the wealth of knowledge that she has through this inspiring class. So if you'd like to try Skillshare for yourself, then the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. And then after that, it will cost less than $10 a month for the annual subscription. So it's the next day now, and yesterday after I finished filming, I made a quick trip to Bunnings to pick up some supplies for a DIY project I want to try. Lately, I've been so inspired by the grid tile furniture trend that's going around. It's basically all over TikTok and Pinterest and Instagram. And I'm in a bit of a DIY mood at the moment, so I really want to give it a try for myself. Um, let me show you what I'm thinking. So here's a little look at the supplies I bought from Bunnings yesterday. I picked up this plywood bench top to sit right on top of the cupboards, um, which I think looks really cool. But then I also bought a heap of these little tiles to potentially tile onto the plywood um, just to make this cupboard situation look a little bit less like flat pack furniture. Like I said, I'm really, really inspired by this tiled look at the moment. And I think it's just gonna add something really different to this corner here. At first I was just thinking of going plywood, but like I said, I'm really in a DIY mood at the moment. So I think I'm gonna have a go at doing a bit of tiling. <laughs> Never done it before, so who knows if it's gonna work out or not, but I think it could be fun to try. I also picked up these black handles, which I'm gonna swap the ones that came with the cupboard for these. Um, I just think it makes it look a lot nicer and they kind of go with the other accents I have in the room, like the black hairpin legs at my cutting table. So yeah, I think these will also make these cupboards look a little bit less like flat pack furniture. So yeah, I've never done tiling like this before, but I have done a bit of research last night. I found a few YouTube videos that went through the whole process and if it fails, that's fine. I think it's going to be worth a try. And if it does work, I think it will add a really cool look to this space. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. And fingers crossed it will turn out as I've pictured it in my mind. 
So first up, I had to make the tile adhesive and I did this by mixing the adhesive powder with some water. I just mixed it in one of Matt's old protein containers. I then spread the adhesive onto the board using a scraper and I decided to work in small areas just because it was quite warm that day and a little bit breezy and I didn't want the adhesive to dry quickly. So once I'd spread out an area that was about the same size as the first lot of tiles, I would stick the tiles in place, lining up any of the extras that I needed and then kept working on until the board was completely covered in tiles. I'll leave a link to all the videos that I found really helpful down in the description below. Um, they will explain this whole process in a lot more detail if you were wanting to make something like this for yourself. So I'm now going to leave the adhesive to dry. It says to leave it for about 24 hours, but it is really breezy out there today, so it might not take that long. I'll check it in a bit just to see how it's going, but otherwise I'll leave it till tomorrow to do the grouting. But while I wait, I'm gonna try and sort out all of the other bits and pieces that were on that shelving unit and try and find a home for them all. <laughs> Okay, so it's a good six hours later and I don't know if you can see or not, but it is drying up really nicely. Um, like I said, it's very breezy and it's actually quite warm as well. So it's drying really nicely. I'm way too impatient to wait till tomorrow though. So I'm actually gonna make the grout now, grout the tiles and then let it dry overnight. Hopefully that won't be a mistake, but I don't think it's gonna affect it too much because it's not like these are gonna be structural tiles or anything they're just for display so yeah i'm gonna give it a go once i made up the grout i used a grout float to spread it all over the tiles until they were completely covered and every single crack was filled i was told it's best to spread the grout out in a diagonal motion once the grout was in every nook and cranny i left it to dry for about three to five minutes and then i took a damp sponge and wiped away all of the excess this bit was super messy and it took a while to get rid of all that black grout, but eventually it did start to wipe away and then took a soft cloth just to wipe over it again to get rid of any leftover grout. So it's the next day now and I just put the tiled bench top onto the cupboards and I think it looks pretty good. I'm super happy with how the tiling turned out. It's not something I have ever tried before, so really happy with that. And it was a lot of fun to try something new. I spent a bit of time this morning just cleaning up the grout around the tiles and cleaning it off the plywood as well. It actually came off with a bit of water, which is nice. Um, I thought I'd have to get some sandpaper out and fix that. There are a few little bits of adhesive showing on this side, which is a shame. Um, if I was to do it again, I would be sure to like wipe that away before letting it dry. But these are things you learn along the way, I guess. All in all, I'm really, really happy with it. So now that the bench top is complete, I'm gonna spend this morning having a bit of fun making this whole little nook look really beautiful. I bought a heap of dried flowers yesterday. So I'm gonna make a really nice floral arrangement for that corner, which hopefully will look really nice. And I also have a few other bits and pieces I can use to decorate that space a little bit. And I also have these black door handles, which I'm gonna swap out the originals with these just to make it look a little bit nicer. So I'll do that as well. And then it will be time to show you my new and improved fabric storage.
honestly could not be happier with how this whole storage situation has turned out. I really do think the tiled bench top works so nicely in this space and I actually like how you can see the natural timber underneath as well as it kind of really nicely ties in with the other tables I have in this space and obviously the fabrics just look so nice in their new home. Yeah I just think this whole corner just is so much brighter and neater now and I think this little dried floral arrangement works really nicely here as well and it kind of brings out some of the colors in the fabric too which I didn't plan but I love how they look together and it's nice to finally have a spot to put my silver play button that I got for passing 100,000 subscribers. It's nice to have that out of its box and on display because it's something I'm definitely very proud of and every time I see it I'm reminded of all the wonderful people that follow along on my sewing journey. It's just something I'm so so grateful for and it will never get old. <laughs> and lastly I have just hung my You're Just Peaches and Cream print by Bespoke Letterpress. I'm not sure they stock this print anymore but if they do I'll have a link to it down below um, if you'd like to pick one up for yourself. Uh, but yeah there's not much else to say. I'm just so so happy with how this whole area looks and it turned out way way better than I was expecting to which is always a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed coming with me as I fix up my fabric storage. If you did enjoy this video then I would love it if you could give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Thanks for watching!